genus Homo are considered as first intelligent primates. Hello friends, today we'll have a discussion on genus Homo. Genus Homo are considered as first intelligent primates who have depicted the ability to manipulate and manufacture tools. So let's have a quick discussion on them. They are considered as that apes who are capable of assembling crude tools for their survival. We do have lot many definition for them, but the major characteristic is their intelligence and physically they become capable that they can manufacture tools. Now we have Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Neanderthal men who comes under the genus Homo. Now this particular Homo habilis, we do have difference of opinion whether Homo habilis was the first species under homos and whether it uh, whether it was from genus australopithecus so we do have diverse opinion but yes largely we will find anthropologists who support that homo habilis were that first species who can be considered as first homo so this is what we will see the first species of homo appeared around 2.5 million years ago that is late Pliocene or early Pleistocene period okay so this is what we will see now Louis Leakey is important paleont paleontologist and John Napier who gave this new genus name as Homo Homo habilis right so Homo habilis as I have said men handy men or skilled men now, Homo habilis were found in various places such as Hadar, Homo, Ethiopia, Urka, lot many places, okay? And we have seen that Louis Leakey have considered even that it was place called Orlevia George in Tanzania, which is considered as cradle of human civilization. We can understand some of the features which was totally different from Australopithecus genus when we are comparing physical features of genus Homo, right? Such as brain size. Brain size of Homo was much bigger than Australopithecus. And then cranial wall was rounded. Frontal lobes of brain were well developed. Collar, collar bone were very robust. Mandible shows similarity to Africanus. Okay, and leg bones are an erect bipedian hominid. So these are features which actually, which actually give a lot of evidences that it this particular species should be considered under Homo and not under the species called Australopithecines. Okay, so these are some of the characteristics like bigger brain, forehead rises straight up. Skull becomes rounder, teeth are reduced, arms are shorter, legs are longer, skeleton becomes more delicate. So this is the Homo genus which we can say was separated from the earlier homonyms. And because of this we can say the tool use gives us a good detailed understanding that how when the homos have developed tools it was just not that they become only physically suitable for making the tools they have also developed language communications during that period of time only because just to make tools you do not need only physical changes you also required intelligence so we can say that homo habilis or homo genus was really important for us in order to understand how culture language also have developed because when we are making the tools there so these primates were also communicating with each other so primates definitely live in social grouping and when they were making the primates they were also talking in gestures some sounds they were using 
just for taking some decision that which type of stone tools they are going to make it for their survival for hunting and gathering okay so that that shows that homo habilis was a very important species for us to understand how humans have evolved and become homo sapiens sapiens in coming lectures we'll discuss more on neanderthal we'll discuss more other species which comes under homo thank you